This is a little compilation that was put together. Yeah, Nikki McCann Ramirez on Twitter. At uh, Rolling Stone. She's at Rolling Stone. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. She's over at Rolling Stone. There was this student, uh, a Yale student, who said that she was attacked uh, as a Jewish student by a pro-Palestinian demonstrator poked in the eye by a pro-Palestine flag. And that sounds severe. It can blind you. I mean, that sounds... It doesn't sound like national news. It sounds like a problem for local authorities if it happened, which it didn't, but... Well, let's be fair. I mean, maybe they only covered it once. Stabbed in the eye. And she said she was stabbed in the eye with a Palestinian flag during a protest. One student claimed she was stabbed in the eye during protests at Yale. One Jewish student at Yale was stabbed in the eye with a Palestinian flag. She was stabbed in the eye with a Palestinian flag. One of the students whose face was covered took a Palestinian flag he was holding, waved it in my face, and hit me in the left eye. I immediately yelled, he stabbed me, and I ran after him. You're harassing fellow students if you're preventing people from getting to class. If you're stabbing your fellow students in the eye with flags, you should go to prison. A Jewish Yale student who says she was stabbed in the eye. Claims she was stabbed in the eye during (laughs) protests at Yale. Yale student journalist, and she was stabbed in the eye. It seems quite traumatizing. It does seem it. I mean, trigger warning for people. We have footage of this vicious attack. (sighs) Let's see. So that's her claiming that she was stabbed in the eye. Stabbed in the eye. And also, let's see it one more time. Enhance. Okay. Sure. Well, what I didn't realize was this particular student at Yale, who is making these claims, had previously gone viral for another instance that she deemed to be uh, an anti-Semitic, basically, um, action by Yale University. This was her in December. This is, uh, yeah, the, the, you can see the quote tweet below, where she a screenshot of her tweet talked about the uh the couscous at yale she says at yale the years old popular israeli couscous salad with spinach and tomatoes has been renamed in our dining halls as the same exact dish but without the word israeli and someone pointed it out, Victor Kagan. Good afternoon from the Yale Dining Hall. Photo taken minutes ago. It's still called the Israeli salad couscous. So a, a Zionist line. We have had a lot of, you know, suspicions about this right wing blitz uh, as it relates to all of these incidents that are happening on campus. And we will repeatedly say this. I don't doubt that there have been some isolated incidents of anti-Semitism and anti-Semitism is on the rise. It's one of the oldest forms of hate in our society and should be condemned. However, this is a McCarthy (laughs) witch hunt on anybody that supports Palestinian rights and that is standing against genocide and a smear campaign by the furthest right elements in our media and in society i'm sorry even if that girl was stabbed like michael myers um that is it's not uh it's not it's inappropriate that this has taken any sort of national political conversation space that would be a issue for authorities if it was true it's not true but actually what it was was a opportunity for propaganda for people who support genocide everybody in that clip is a genocide supporter i mean hassan just tweeted this out every single media outlet that centers its coverage on the feelings of students who defend israel and not about the mass graves being uncovered in gaza is due and so deliberately the pro-palestinian students want the attention to remain on gaza it is simple as that and again like well let's play this clip of this columbia student here a jewish student who says just that um sorry i didn't mean to cut you off there matt i mean like let's actually take 
the listen to the protesters, not just take the face value framing for the New York Times and other outlets that, that it's all about the anti-Semitism from these protests. The Columbia Jewish Voice for Peace uh, organizing group has been targeted by the administration. They were a part of the arrest, Jewish students, often disproportionately represented, and they're screaming from the rooftop, stop speaking for me, including here uh, this student, Jared Cannell, who is a Columbia student who's been taking part in the encampment. And there's some weird music behind this for some reason, but I mean, I don't know why they did that. I'm a Jewish student at Columbia. When we talk about anti-Semitism on campus, that's taking the, um, the spotlight away from Gaza, away from Palestine and the Palestinian students on campus and putting it back onto me. I am perfectly safe here and this has all been a distraction because they don't want us talking about the non-stop massacre of Gaza, of Palestinian civilians being taken out by the IDF. I grew up being taught that Israel was an important part of my Jewish identity and part of being a Jew was supporting Israel. I was raised Zionist and then I, I met a Palestinian for the first time and heard the perspective, heard their perspective and was able to realize that I was on the wrong side of this, that I'd been taught the wrong side of this. Pause. And, uh, to me, calling in. That's the danger that Zionists are afraid uh, yep. that uh, Zionist, young Zionist Jews are in, is that they might be exposed to actually uh, what they need to be exposed to, which is how awful that their ideology that they've been inculcated with is and disastrous it is. And they should actually, uh, the safety is right there. You follow this kid's, uh, you follow this kid's uh, and you don't have to worry about how people are criticizing you anymore because you actually aren't supporting genocide. The only people who are unsafe right now are the people who, well, I mean, of course. Anti-Zionists. Well, I mean, anti-Zionists are unsafe. They're being arrested. The Gaza is, is being starved to death and uh, there's right. a genocide <laughs> happening. Exactly, yeah. But the safety that they're most concerned about Again, these Zionist uh, right wingers is settler colonial it's ideology. The state of Israel. They don't give a shit about any individuals. Totally, and they're really threatened by the fact that there's this massive reckoning on college campuses. And it, there's it, historically all the protests before were good. The sit-ins for civil rights. NYU still touts all that stuff. So is Columbia, obviously. The Vietnam War protests, the protests against the Iraq War, the protests to divest these universities from apartheid South Africa. They were all right when we have were able to look back and pretend that we would have been on the right side. Um, but the current protests, that's the bad one. The threat here is to the propaganda effort the Hasbara, the multi-decade just uh, propaganda campaign by the state of Israel and by uh, people invested in it financially or emotionally that have made this a religious conflict between two sides as opposed to what it is, an occupation and one of racial justice. And that, I think, is the most threatening part. The fact that these students are making the connection to past racial justice movements and they're tailoring their protests as such. Let's uh, hear the rest of what this kid has to say and, you know, obviously awesome stuff to see. Is that I was on the wrong side of this, that I had been taught the wrong side of this. And, uh, to me, calling in the police was an act of desperation. Uh, they know they know where the students stand. They saw the students come together to support their suspended and arrested friends. And, uh, we, we see that other universities are following in our footsteps and we welcome them. Uh, we just want to make sure that they do it in solidarity with Gaza and with Palestine and that the focus is not on us. But we, we hope that this can be uh, an important step in the liberation of Palestine and an end to the occupation and an end to the genocide. Great job. Hell yeah. I mean, Jeremy Scahill, I, I mentioned the PSYOP phrase and somebody else thought that was hysterical. No, that's exactly what the word PSYOP was used to describe is what we're seeing right now with regards to Zionists um, trying to find some way to be a victim as they supported genocide. Jeremy Scahill, uh, so many, quote, uh, so many deliberate distraction operations at play. The leadership of the Democratic Party is pushing the narrative that the real problem with the Gaza war is Netanyahu. Pro-Israel charlatans have con con concocted a false narrative about rampant, rampant anti 
anti-Semitism on U.S. campuses and succeeded in making this a fake emergency, this fake emergency, a major media focus. All while mass graves are being uncovered in Gaza, the slaughter of Palestinian civilians continue, continues with U.S. weapons and support and a full scale invasion of Rafa looms. There is no there is zero uh, uh, room for quibbling on that. Anybody who is participating in that emphasis saying, oh, actually, no, we need to do both. No, you can't make Israel start. If we can do both, then Israel starts doing it, stopping the genocide first. Then we, maybe we can pay attention to what Barry Weiss wants, the, the new like bullshit that Barry Weiss wants to uh, subject us to, to make Israelis seem like, the, and Zionists seem like the victim here. They, they are they're not. They're getting their nails done. They're going to Michelin star restaurants. They're, the society, I mean, they brag about it. The, some of the, the Israeli spokespeople essentially saying, could you imagine if we didn't have the Iron Dome, what those Iran strikes would look like? I can't imagine it. We don't I need to that. imagine. We can look over in Gaza and see. We just had an IM that I think is just really, really misguided. Let's go. Lawful Waffle says, in quotes, I was a racist that supported slavery, then met a black person and realized I was wrong. An 1850 Southerner that the MR crew would platform. If that Southerner decided to go and fight for the Union and become an abolitionist, then perhaps we would platform them. I don't really understand what that connection is and frankly sorry what's the metaphor well the metaphor is that because this jewish kid now i'm gonna actually say that sounds a little anti-semitic that they are uh pro-confederate black people go fuck yourself lawful waffle well not black person it would be a white person it said i mean wait wait, let's get it again i was a racist that supported slavery then met a black person and realized i was wrong 1850 southerner that mr crew would platform basically i don't even understand that i i I, me neither (laughs) Basically, the, the comparison is that this Jared Cannell, this student would have been in that in that analogy, a white, white southerner, southerner who reformed himself after speaking to a black person, which would have been good. <laughs> yeah, what, I don't, what, sorry, I, like yeah, this is like that kid in the West Bank uh, who is like, yeah, yeah, I actually went to the West Bank and actually yeah. saw that what, what I was. Yeah, we don't blame people for being propagandized here. Um, the problem is when they are reproducing propaganda and enforcing it. Exactly. And I think, if you, and I think uh, if you, fuck? and I think it's also like I also think that the attitude shouldn't be wanting to basically effectively disbar or disallow anybody to have that actual change of heart and change of mind. Absolutely. To put forth that into actually service of something better than we what need they, it. Than protesting what they for gaza right now right what he, are you talking he, about he's, he's explicitly saying he wants to end the genocide and wants to be a be integral have make some sort of support while as he can in the united states where we're effectively helpless as citizens we can't change military policy but they can make their voices heard this way yeah he's putting himself on the line and saying we aren't the focus gaza is what do you want well, he's giving his name. Well, Siri, I'm sorry, but that well, they is would ridiculous. Want, they're, they're probably saying that we should be profiling Palestinians. Sure. Which, which, of course, uh, but I, I do. We do. I think, we, yeah, I think we've done a, we've made a concerted effort to do so. But uh, I'm sorry, like the, the, um, the uh, anti-Zionist Jews uh, actually have a important role to play here, too, with the way that that identity is being uh, exploited. exploited. So, I mean, I could not, I'm so annoyed at that I am. Jesus Christ. I, I saw it. And I was, I knew, I knew what would come, but I mean, yeah, I agree with you, Matt. I mean, Nicola Dimitri says, you guys, I was born with perfect politics and ethics. Weren't you? Uh, no, that, oh, then you can't be on the left. <laughs> um, Dave from Jamaica says, dog shit I am of the year. <laughs> anyway. It's just like everything wrong. Yeah. With some it, people that are active in the world right now doing things right as opposed to like, oh, did I have the right position on this earlier than other people? That's pathological. And I think it's analogous too to like I think some of the most um, gratifying calls or IMs we get are, are people who have essentially, in some way or another, I don't know if de-radicalize is the right terminology, but have basically been like I was in the right wing media pipeline and I kind of found you guys and others right. and were able to like moderate or reform my positions. And I think like I wouldn't want to be like oh, but like you you watched Crowder at some point or you watched Shapiro at some point like get lost like yeah. i think we i think in a world where it is so unbelievably difficult to, re- to resist entrenchment um of people's views and ideologies to actually have that persuasion happen i think is a really good thing